What's up, everybody, and welcome to The Comment Writers. I'm your host, Josh Meek, the Uber Geek, and I'm joined, as always, by my good friend, Toby Tobes. How's it going, Toby? Josh, I'm fat on Chinese buffet right now. I'm ready to go. Oh, my gosh. You are living high on the hog over there. I love a good Chinese buffet. <laughs> it was delicious. I overeat as you're supposed to do. Obviously, yes. The, the Of all the restaurants in the world where you are, you know, intended to, to just go and just inflict harm on your own body, I think the Chinese buffet is is the best one of those. Like you're you're just you're not leaving there in a in a reasonable state, you know, in a, in a way that like you you feel good about what you just did and and what who what transpired. You, you See, you're I, walking, walking I out of there. Like, just yeah. I feel good about myself. Uh, okay. my important question for you though. Like I like physically, I feel full and sick, but I feel good about the work that I did. Oh yeah, yeah, no, I'm I'm right there with you. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a do you have a set I'll call it schedule or rotation of when you go to the buffet, like your eating order. Oh, it's like what what I'm getting when I'm there. Yeah, like if you're doing like obviously you're doing more than one plate. Yeah, like do you have do you have a staple plate one, plate two, dessert kind of thing? It's a good question. I I don't really. I'll do like I'll usually go through on the first plate and do just like a little bit of everything that I like, which is like the majority of things. So it's like it's this big, (laughs) massive, stupid plate that has like a bunch of junk on it. Uh, And uh, each subsequent plate is kind of that, but with like just the highlights. So it's it's sort of it's like an NCAA bracket to put it in your terms, Toby. <laughs> we start with like the top thirty two, then we get to the sweet sixteen, then we then we're in top eight. So like we keep we keep like zeroing in on my favorites. Um so things that I like the most probably that would be on the final plate. Uh I like a good like crab rangoon if, if there's okay. if there's one That's of those. A solid one. Those are good. Um I like uh I like any of the Kind of like pepper chickens or the like any any anything that's like a chicken slathered in sauce is really good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's usually like like three or four different varieties of those. Um, those are definitely like the top things. I really like those stupid little uh, buns that have sugar on the outside. Those are good. So like they're, they're just like fake donuts, or I guess they're real donuts, but they're yeah yeah yeah. And like buffet the, donuts, and they're objectively bad, but you eat them and they're good there. They're they're good at the Chinese buffet. But if you asked me like right now if I wanted one of those, I'd be like, no, I don't, I don't want any of those. <laughs> it doesn't sound good. Uh, but at the at the Chinese buffet, they're fantastic. Um, See, I do I do a fancy rotation of sorts. Okay. Uh, my first plate is always basically the appetizer round, which that means like a couple crab rangoons usually, good. like you said, uh, a couple little pieces of like the sushi rolls. The little generic oh, okay. ones, uh, maybe some seaweed salad. Sometimes a delicious egg roll, and then I'll go take a seat and I'll hoss that down in like thirty seconds. <laughs> and then I go and then I go main plate for one or two plates of like all the chickens or stuffed mushrooms or today I had some nice baked salmon with some sort of red sauce on it and that was Ooh, pretty good. Fancy. So a bunch of those things, and then my game changer, Josh, instead of dessert. My final round is plain white rice with kimchi on it. Oh, interesting. And I always do a cup of the hot and sour soup. Okay. And f- and for whatever reason, I feel like that coats my stomach in a way that I don't feel as horrible oh, afterwards. Nice. But I also don't like dessert. So that's basically like my dessert. Which yeah, I, <laughs> I avoid the dessert at places like that. You know, you know I, I just, it's not... Like I don't, I don't need soft serve ice cream anymore in my life, right? Like it's like because that's what the dessert always is of those. It was like, do you want to get some soft serve ice cream? You want to, you want to get the chocolate and vanilla swirled together? I'm like, not, not really. I just rather have some more chicken slathered in sauce, actually. Um, but uh, no, it's it's always good to talk shop with an expert here. And <laughs> I didn't, uh, I didn't know about the trick with the the soup. I. I tend I tend to avoid the soups at at places like that too. Like I, I always felt like the soup was a trap, but as a uh, as a you know pre hangover cure, <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. I also I like your appetizer plate idea too. That's that's nice. Like a little like ease you into it. You know, get get a little get a, get a little base going. <laughs> that seems good. But like especially like in one on one situations, dining with me at the buffet is probably the worst. 
like you know how they always say like a movie is a bad date or bad first date because like you don't really talk during a movie you just kind of sit there and stare at the screen yeah for sure uh like going with me 1v1 at the buffet is usually a horrible it's a horrible conversational time because so my appetizer plate is light and everyone else usually loads up on that first plate <laughs> so you're, so, you're out so, of the table again <laughs> yeah so like everyone vaguely sits down I'm either already sitting down or even if I get there a little bit after everyone, they're all like doing real food. I pop a, I pop a couple sushis in, eat my Rangoon. I'm like, all right, I'll see everybody later. And then I go up and get my first main plate, but it's my second plate. And at that point, the whole cycle's backwards where everyone else is usually getting up at the same time. And I'm usually by myself doing the opposite of what else is doing. Gotcha. See, so, so 1v1, bad time. <laughs> <laughs> I find I find though like I going – to a Chinese buffet with someone else, like I'm usually with a woman <laughs> at some point in the party, be it either my wife or like when I was growing up, like my mom and they, they would have like a purse and stuff. Right. So like, like the, we would tend to get in the habit of like, Oh, I'll, I'll stay here with your purse. You can go ahead. And then when you come back, I'll go like that always ended up being the thing. It wasn't like everyone got up at once. Uh, so I'm kind of used to the like taking turns. <laughs> At the at the buffet situation, yeah, it, it's more of a forced a forced thing with me, so that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean in general, like yes, it usually is. Someone has a purse there or something like that, so it probably it probably works better that way. But we're definitely not talking. Like when yeah, you sit I, down to say like, "Oh, how's your food?" I go, "Oh, good. I'm getting another plate. Though. I'll be right back." And then yeah, I find the cycle that the, continues. The buffet, the Chinese buffet especially, it is a, it's a business transaction there. Like you you might be there with the other people. But yeah, you, you're not like catching up with someone over that meal. You you are your your ship's passing in the night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you, if you want to go have a nice nice conversation, you know, you head down to the head down to the fancy steakhouse or something. But but here it's it, it's it's pigs at the trough. <laughs> <laughs> I, my one buddy doesn't really like most of the Chinese food. but gets like the actual hibachi they have built in to most of those restaurants, where like you just go in the back and point to the things you want and they make your own like yeah. quick hibachi noodle thing. So he's even worse because like he needs 10 minutes to even start getting food. So usually like I'm near completion of my meal by the time he even gets his. And then <laughs> I guess it's better for the talking part, but then I'm just sitting there watch, watching someone watching eat for 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So I, this, this probably comes as no, sh- no shock to you, Toby. Um, the hibachi portions of those restaurants are too intimidating for me. I don't know what to do. It comes with interacting with a human, so I'm just out. I'm just like, no, I'm just gonna, just gonna get more of this chicken over here and not have to do the thing where I have to point at stuff and tell someone to cook it or not cook it or whatever the process is. And yes, just, no. My thing is always like, if I want hibachi, I'll go to the hibachi. If I want the Chinese buffet, I want Chinese buffet. That's so I'm very, I'm very regimented in my meal like that. Where I need, I'm there for specific things. In general, if I'm at a buffet, like this is true of like, like an American style buffet too, like a Golden Corral or something like that. Um, you know, a lot of times they'll try to get fancy and they'll have like someone cutting meat for you and stuff. And I always hate that too. Like I don't want to, don't put a, a, a person between me and like gluttonous behavior here. Like I don't want to interact with another human and tell him like, yes, one more slice of ham. Yes, I, I have been up here three times. Yep, that is, that's what we're doing. Yep. So yeah, just just keep those people out of it for me. Yeah, fly <laughs> solo. Toby, you, you mentioned uh, bad first dates. Um, I, <laughs> I I went to so the let me movies. tell you about. <laughs> I went to the movies uh, on the first date with my wife. Actually, <laughs> we didn't talk. It was wonderful. Uh, we actually it was it was worked out well. We got there early enough, and there was really no one else in the theater that we had like a solid like thirty minutes to talk before the movie happens, which I feel like was a good amount, right? Like it's not so much that you just like run out of things to say to a person <laughs> that, that you don't know very well, but it was, it was enough to like, you know, have a little start, bit start of the situation. Yeah. Right. Like, is this person a crazy person in real life or not? And then, yeah, then it works out. I don't know. What, what, what's, what's your go-to first date? What do you, do you have a good one? Probably not. The last one was at a bar. <laughs> that seems bad too. I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that doesn't seem. Well, like the, the last one was at a bar, but like 
I guess we knew where the date was going ahead of time in the sense of like we were la. Start dating <laughs> in general anyway. So it was just more like the this is the first vehicle meet. the vehicle for me to be like, hey, we should date kind of deal. And then I got very drunk at the bar accidentally. <laughs> and when I get extra drunk, I slur my words real bad. Uh-huh. So at one point towards the end, a random person sat down next to us. And I was talking to the person at the bar more than my almost girlfriend or then girlfriend at the point. I forget the timing of this. Oh, no. But at one point, since I started slurring my words and stuff, she asked me something. And I said, I'm talking to my bar friend. But in a drunken slur, it sounded like boyfriend. <laughs> and then she was extra confused about why I asked her to the bar. So yeah, it why? Been, I, think it was, I think it was before. Before. It must have been before I actually asked her out. That's wonderful. <laughs> uh, I had a similar... Um, confusion on the first date with my with my now wife in that um you know it was just we, we i didn't we didn't know each other so like she was talking about things and like obviously wasn't telling me like every aspect of her entire life but like the way she phrased something i didn't dig into it because again i you know didn't didn't know her super well at the time so i just like she said something and I let it go on and I thought about it later and like the way that she'd phrased the particular thing, um, I got it in my head that she was dying. <laughs> and, and I really like for sure like, thought. No, no wonder she's going to date me. <laughs> no, seriously, like all that went through my head that then I had to tell her like, like it, then I found out later, like obviously continued to date her, found out she wasn't actually dying uh, and then had to tell her like a long time after that, like, yeah, I definitely thought you were dying for like the first little bit of us dating. At first, uh, I thought I was just doing doing you a solid. And I was like, sure, I'll date you if you're dying. I kept waiting for the other shoe to drop. Yeah, I kept waiting <laughs> exactly. for like the serious conversation to sit down and happen. But um, no, it uh, <laughs> didn't didn't work out that way. Speaking uh, of dating, let's talk about Gotchard. <laughs> let's do it. Gotchard this week. uh uh, was fun. I think I, I really I liked this episode a lot. I um, uh, so I I even made some made some gifts of this episode, Toby. Oh no, I was all in. Uh, you can find those over on Tumblr, prettydecejosh.tumblr.com if you want to check out my amazing gifting. Uh, but this yes, this is Gotcha Art episode nine. We'll dive right in. Uh, so last time around we had our double episode with uh. Sabo needle and father and son relationships and being too hard and, on and, your and the kid. sadness and the sadness of losing a pokey friend exactly and this episode is kind of like pure fun really <laughs> so things got a little serious last time and this time around uh the kids are heading off to kyoto for a school trip so we open up in the classroom which i found very striking like We'd seen Mr. Bonato as like alchemy teacher for so long. I forgot that he was also like a real teacher too. So like, my note, my note to go exactly with that said I completely forgot Kudo was in class with him. Was in class yeah. with uh, H- uh, Hodora. Like the first, the the sort of like build up to this series was all like high school kids, like as the the promo material. And like, that was like the first episode. And then from that point on, it's just been alchemy. <laughs> yeah. I totally forgot. This is all a house, a high school thing too. Uh, but it was cool to see them all like in class again. The gist basically, yes, they're going to Kyoto. They have to have uh, research groups and a research theme. So of course, Hodoro doesn't have a group. He slacked on picking out his group. So he assumes that Kudo's going to be in his group, and of course she gets frustrated about him just assuming that they're going to be together. But she also doesn't have a group yet either. So I knew that that even like the the situation happened quick, but I knew to keep the slap sticking and the fake dating alive that she was going to be like, I don't want to be your partner. <laughs> yes, she has to. <laughs> that's really hard to get. Uh, but but turns out they they weren't really the love interest that was happening <laughs> in this episode, but. <laughs> Uh, the love interest falls to uh, their friend uh, uh, Kajiki, who is the monster lover. He's, he's the, the, ho- the horror book reading, aliens existing, Tom DeLong parody. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's great. Uh, yes, he, he goes full on Tom DeLong this episode because uh, they're going to go hunt UFOs in Kyoto. Uh, the, the book that the um, monster friend has been reading is Kyoto, The Door to Another World, the special special issue of that magazine that he always carries around. 
so yeah, um, they're, they're the group. They're heading over to Kyoto for their trip. And we get a quick little scene in Kyoto where there's a monk at a temple and he sees uh, basically UFO lights in the sky. So yes, I, I wrote down call Tom DeLong. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote down aliens exist. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, and yeah, so the 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 thing about Kyoto, which I think this episode like proved, <laughs> but going into this, I knew Kyoto was like very touristy and was very like temple heavy and very um, period. Uh, recreation heavy so like like we see that a lot here just like dressed up in period garb um carrying your samurai swords and stuff so yeah we see a lot of that and the kids are very excited uh to go check out kyoto for all the various things uh that they can see and do there so it's not obviously it's not as we're getting our episodes translated and subtitled and everything i found it extra hilarious that every time i did a shot of like what would be considered a tourist location in Kyoto. It was always a big splash screen of like, this is so-and-so bridge. This is so-and-so temple. This yeah. is so-and-so whatever. Like they're just hammering home. Like this is more of a let's go visit locales kind of vibe. It was fun. Yeah. It gave it a cool vibe. And it, yeah, I loved that they did that. Or just the like, yes, here is the giant fight that's happening next to this, uh, this location that you, you probably recognize. And here's the one that's happening here. And it's, it's just like, they're just name dropping places to go see in Kyoto, <laughs> which was super fun. And it gave it a real, um, it gave it like an anime summer vacation vibe, you know, like, you know, like there's always <laughs> the episodes in the anime where all the characters go to the beach. Uh, it, it felt like that a little bit, uh, which I, which I liked a lot. Uh, but in the show, we cut back to Hodoro's restaurant. Hodoro's very excited about this. He's like singing and dancing to himself uh, he made some Kyoto style uh, Ankake Tenshidan, which I still am not 100% sure what that is. I tried to look it up and uh, it's it seems um, it seems gross looking to me, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Ankake is the sauce, I think. Uh, but uh, anyway, I don't I'm not, not sure what makes it Kyoto style. Uh, and this is, of course, is where Kijiki shows up and says, like, it showed up and, and says the UFO sighting happened, which we just saw in Kyoto. So the hype is real among these boys. <laughs> As, since we're still in the vague territory of it, I was making jokes with the navigator before. So all of Geats, all of last season, uh, during the little cutaways and the shots in the intro, there's the big Geats ones was the gun to Geats face. And yep. the barbed wire breakout that I was all excited for. I was like, this is going to happen. And then you said, well, sometimes, you know, it's not really a thing that they're just like throw away things or shades or what someone said. it." So I was reflecting upon that today when I was watching the intro credits and there's a scene of Hodoro, his mom and Kudo, like all basically hugging in the, the restaurant together. Okay. Like yeah. everyone's smiling, having a good time. And obviously it hasn't happened yet. And all I could think of was like last season, I just kept looking forward to geese with the gun to his face over and over and over. And that was like my tentative hype point that may or may not happen. And this time the polar opposite of that is just like basically like him dating this girl probably and their mom having a good time with all them doing a couple things. And <laughs> there really is like a microcosm of the differences between those two shows. Like I want to see the main character shoot himself in the face versus like, <laughs> I want to see everybody be happy and hug. <laughs> That's yeah, that's great. <laughs> uh, I don't know what it is about Gotchard, but yeah, like for some reason I haven't paid attention to the visuals in the opening. So like I can't even picture that happening that, that you're talking about. I and watched I, so I watched it more today than I usually do because usually <laughs> I just listen to the song because I like the song and just kind of like do yeah. whatever else while the song's playing. So, but today I watched more of it and like there's I I couldn't even tell you if it changed so far like nine episodes in. Because not like the Geats one, you should just skip. This one I listen to, I just don't watch it. So I feel like it maybe might be a little bit different now, but I was just actually watching the scenes this time because I thought about the Geats thing. And I was like, oh, this is what we're looking forward to. So here, I sent you the picture. This is okay. a very quick shot during the credits. Oh, yeah, they're but like, happy. But like Kudo's holding Hodoro's mom's hair back while they're doing something like they're cooking. Oh, her. yeah, there she is. That's right. <laughs> Wait, no, 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 that's not her hand. That's a scrunchie or something, right? I don't know. No, because her left arm is behind Kudo, uh, Hodoro's mom's back. Like, I'm pretty that, sure she's, like, brushing her hair out of the way or something. 
Oh, I, it kind of looks like she's like ready to like assault her at this point. I can't tell. That's but like th- th- this is this is the uh, the Geats in the barbed wire shot right here. It is <laughs> just a happy family moment. Hopper's in the bottom. Hop, right Hopper out. one's there too. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Yeah, that t- totally the vibe <laughs> of both of those shows. Uh, and then, yes, speaking of the vibe, uh, Spanner's vibe is that he continues to obsess over what the Abyssal sisters are doing. He's back where the sister showed up last time. He's looking for clues. And uh, the sister, uh, I wrote down her name, La Chessis. Uh She's the one who had the happy clover last time around. She shows back up to fight Spanner. She plays and the mouth harp and transforms. <laughs> she does. She she has a yeah, she has a new kemi that gives her like a bamboo arm cannon. And and basically she drops the info that she can use multiple kemi cards, even though humans can only use one. Uh and then, then Valverad shows off that he too can use multiple cards and he um he turns his arm one arm into a uh chopper and one arm into a digger. And uh everyone's very impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I did realize in this scene that I like Valverad's design so much, like it, the, his look, the look of his suit, because it it is like the underlying color of it is white, um, whereas the rest of like modern common writer, it's like a black jumpsuit where they just stick things on top of it. Like that was very <laughs> much Geats, right? Like black jumpsuit, put a, a faceplate on the front of it. Where well, yeah, especially had, the, the generics, like yeah, one hundred percent, but like the less pure main character vibe people was definitely just like the plain black jumpsuit, the plain a very plain helmet, possibly tied to it kind of thing. Yeah, which I totally get, like why why we go down that path, and I'm sure that's very easy to design and build from, and probably easy to get your actor in and out of, and all that stuff too. Um, but it, it starts to feel a little samey when you have you know your your main character if you pulled off all the armor pieces, they all kind of look the same from series to series. Um, and Valverad is different. He's like got the white under underlying color and he has a lot more pieces all over him. So there's less just sort of exposed jumpsuit area that looks just like plain. Um, so I think, yeah, I think just that visual difference is why he sticks out so much to me. Um, I, I wish that I liked Spanner more. Because I like I like Valverad so much. <laughs> he looks cool, but he's a dick. <laughs> yeah, like he Spano's okay, but he's not like wowing me so far. But like I do I do love the I do love the outfit. And then of course back at the Abyssal Sister headquarters or wherever they hang out, uh the little sister is doing some kind of dark alchemy stuff. They talk which, about which visually looked very cool. It did. Like it was very very simple, but it actually looks good that like there's all sorts of magic slime trail whatever is like flowing in the vials and she's crafting something. Yeah. It's always good to shout out their, their good looking CG <laughs> when it, <laughs> when it comes around. Cause this yeah, actually looks legit and it's yeah. Like going up in the air and floating around and stuff. Uh, there were two important pieces of info. I think on this scene though, one they're working on capturing a level 10 Kemi. So we're about to get like, like level up <laughs> as far as Kemi's <laughs> go. And also we see that they're working on making a driver, so they're in their alchemy that they're doing in the mist. They see the outline of a new driver. So lots of speculation there. An evil common rider coming soon. They're all going to transform together. <laughs> yeah, I wondered if the sisters are going to use it or if they're going to have some sort of like avatar of evil or something like that or kind of what what's going to go on. But uh yeah, it, it looks like a spooky driver, kind of, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so I, I'm excited to see see what that's all about. Uh, and then, Toby, we get a little glimpse of the Shinkansen, the, the high-speed bullet train, which they take to Kyoto. I'm always so jealous when I see, when I see <laughs> high-speed rail travel in Japan. I wish any, we sort had of, uh, mass tra- any sort of mass transit, really. Is oh, God. We are yeah. sorely lacking here. I mean, like, if we had bullet trains... Like, like I could just like ride over and hang out with you for a day. And just come home. <laughs> we could record these things not over the, the internet. <laughs> exactly. Uh, they, they get off the train though, Toby and Hodoro is just boy looks like he's out of it. He looks he looks so sad. Uh, turns out he feels bad for leaving Hopper One at home. <laughs> and the way and the way that they when they show the 
the I guess the cutback to him being sad, they're almost having like a relationship kind of fight. <laughs> where Hodoro where Hodoro is like, no, I promise I'll miss you, but I I, I can't I have to go without you, I think. Like <laughs> Yeah. Like you just you can't you can't go on this trip with me. It's not you. You just you're not allowed to go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then Kudo, of course, points out, like, why didn't you just put him in the card and bring the card? And he looks at her and he gives her this, like, he gives her this shocked look. It's like, it's a school trip. Are you, like, <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> Which is great. And the, and the best part of that is, like, her comebacks to this is she was, like, she basically said, like, you follow, like, the weirdest rules at the weirdest times. And she says, yeah. you're a straight arrow in the strangest areas. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> And of course, watching over the scene is the Abyssal sister, Clotho. She's there. She's in Kyoto. And she sees Hodoro. She recognizes him as the common writer and decides that she's going to kill him before she heads on to capture the level 10 Kemi. There's no better time to break up a school trip unless there's a common writer there. This is like this is perfect planning on their part of, of course, not going to bring Kemi. Hodoro likes to follow the rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean like i don't even think her i don't even think she thought i don't even think it crossed her mind that he wouldn't have brought his cards like that's just an added bonus uh oh i'm but, saying she knew she you definitely think so knew. okay all right all right she 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 had him pegged for a straight shooter <laughs> exactly <laughs> uh and then we get a scene uh leaving the i'm gonna give this a shot the nishik yogoku detention center a uh, <laughs> couple of prisoners are getting loaded into a van uh, and uh, we point out that there's some dark malice. There's a guy who's wearing a very colorful shirt who has a, a very dark vibe that the Abyssal Sisters is, is stoked about. <laughs> he he looks like the evilest of Yakuza. So that was good casting. If he, really, else. he really does. You're right. He fits in like that whole Yakuza vibe super, super well. Uh, the kids head over to the UFO shrine, the the shrine where the uh, the temple where the UFO was spotted, um, and we find out that Hopper One stowed away. So after all that, Hopper One's still here. He's in the backpack, which of course led to shenanigans as Hopper One wants to get out of the backpack. <laughs> Hopper One's dumb, is what I've decided. Hopper One is like the worst parts of Pikachu, where like Pikachu won't go in the Pokeball. Okay, great, you're you're, you're independent. I get it. But like Hopper One's that, but also doesn't know that people can't see him. Like he seems pretty intelligent, but hasn't caught on that like, oh, maybe I shouldn't bounce around and yell Hopper One all the time. Uh, I just feel I like you just can't help it. I guess not. Yeah. I Googled our grasshopper smart because I just wanted to know if maybe they were tagged as a moron insect. <laughs> I mean, that was that could explain part of this. But apparently, like, grasshoppers are one of the most intelligent bugs there are. Uh, that's uh, not apparent with Hopper 1. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea. Of just, like, a picture of a grasshopper and then just, like, a red stamp goes over the image that just says, moron insect. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hopper 1 almost, almost gets caught by the monk who's there. Uh, and then Kajiki just full-on sees him. <laughs> he sees him, and Kajiki goes, I feel like I've seen you before. <laughs> <laughs> Many places. This poor kid with his brain wipes, he's gonna he's gonna lose his mind. And then then Toei Kajiki meets uh, he has a he has a fateful meet. He meets a fellow monster lover under a Tory gate, and they both had their letters published in their in their weird occult magazine. <laughs> and it's basically love at first sight between these two. I was impressed that like all of the heroes usually get to have to play the the doofy oh well what's a girl or what's a boy kind of vibe <laughs> and like the kid that seemed like the nerdiest of them all like meets a girl who writes in the occult book or wrote for the occult book yeah and he's just like hello there i'm a i'm a noted novelist i'm in this book and she's like "Ooh, so am i and they just like kind of like <laughs> he just goes right into it it wasn't like awkward or stupid or at all it was just a very normal happy conversation yeah, he he's like a little um he's a little like first date awkward at times through this, but for the most part like he's what you would expect a a reasonably put together high schooler to to be, right? <laughs> like like not like the super nerd can't speak to girls, but like he's he's only awkward in the sense that like 
he's a little nervous, but he's still pulling it off this whole time. Yeah, it's it's pretty impressive. As, as I can see from his face, he does not have a bloody nose. So I know he's doing okay with this. <laughs> right. He doesn't, he doesn't have a boner. I think that's what that means. <laughs> um, the, the girl's name is Hijiri. And I loved, I loved too, when they both realized that they wrote a letter in this magazine, they had both read the magazine so much that they knew each other. Like they knew each other's name. It was like, oh my God, you're Kajiki. Oh my God, you're Hijiri. <laughs> <laughs> It was like I like the vibe was like I read your letter so many times. It's one of those things where like on the opposite end of that joke, like there used to be a horror movie podcast I used to write emails into all the time and they would always read the emails. So like <laughs> I guess this is like coming full circle. So the way the same people always email us, which is perfectly fine. It's not that kind of conversation. Like I was always that person for a different podcast. Yeah. Yeah. It's so it's just one of those things where it's just like, they know each other because we're the only people that are like writing in. <laughs> oh yeah. It might be, it might, that might be the vibe. It's like, they're the two people who got the letter printed, but also like they're the two they're people the who get their letter. Printed. <laughs> <laughs> that could be, that could be. <laughs> that makes it more fun and more personal. That's why they, that's why they're both so smitten. They're like, wow, you always get in here too. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're the other person who purchases these magazines. <laughs> uh, after they have their little like love break, she heads off to work. Uh, and doesn't she, she tells him where he, where she works, but, th- but they don't like set up the fact that they're going to meet later or anything. She just heads off to work. Then uh, we, we head back and the abyssal sister Clotho breaks out those prisoners that we saw loaded into the van earlier. She kicks the van. It's all cool. Uh, it was a nice little little scene of her. Uh, her dramatically, breaking. dramatically D lock picking or lock picking people's <coughs> handcuffs. And I, I loved that the second she touched the van, um, all the cops became incapacitated. <laughs> like they, the one didn't even hit his head. He just leaned forward slowly and went to sleep. It was pretty great, uh, but the well, prisoners got are fine. Th- the other one got thrown by the the tree monster. So yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's definitely got... some work being done there. Yeah. Speaking of the tree monster, the the uh, Kemi that she gives the prisoner is Jungle Jan, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, turns into an evil tree. Now, now, tell me, the kids head off to uh, Uzumasa Egamura, which is where uh, where they knew that uh, Hijiri worked. Turns out it's like kind of a theme park, sort of. So, like we were saying, it's like it's like a, it's like a samurai theme park. It seems like or yeah, like yeah, feudal times. I guess that would be. I think so. Yeah, like yeah, it's, it's like a feudal time, medieval times theme park place. And they also describe it as a like a movie studio at some point too. So I think they must shoot a lot of movies and stuff there. Um, but yeah, you can kind of sh- wander. They shot Kamen Rider there once. <laughs> yes, they, <did. laughs> they, they shot Kamen Rider there, and they, like they they also definitely were there in Geats too. That one time, you remember, you remember that time in Geats where they all were dressed like samurais for no reason? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was the here. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Um. So they're kind of wandering the theme park. They're looking for Hajiri. They don't know what she does here at this park. So they're like they split up, and uh, Hodoro is full on wingman mode, which I thought was adorable. <laughs> we like, like the whole time, like since. Even when he first saw them meet up about the magazine, when he was like, oh, Hopper, I love you. You're here. And he's like, oh, cool. You're next to me, too. That's fine. <laughs> like, there was no there was no remote jealousy. There was no angst. He's just like, yeah, man, get it. <laughs> yeah. You, you, this, this is your show, man. I'm going to help you get this done. Uh, Kajiki he keeps talking about his fateful encounter. This might be my fateful encounter. <laughs> so good. Uh, finally, they they decide to go in the haunted house, the the quote scariest haunted house ever. Um, Kudo's completely unafraid, so Kudo is the you in the haunted house, and uh, yeah, she's badass. <laughs> and Hodoro and Kajiki are absolutely terrified. Uh, but turns out Hajiri is one of the scary girls that were in the haunted house. So as they leave, they run away. She follows them out and scares them one last time, but then takes her mask off, and it's it's Hajiri. <laughs> So they have their they have their cute little moment. Uh, she she has to work like an hour longer. She says, "Meet me at the bridge later." And then, of course, Minato shows up, tells Kudo and Hodoro that the Abyssal Sisters are in town. The Abyssal Sister is in town, and uh, Hodoro uh, left all his chemi cards at school. The only one that he has is um, is Hopper, of course. So he calls Renge. He calls Sabi Maru. 
and they have to rush them to Kyoto. They hop on, uh, they hop on the motorcycle and they, they start driving. So if they, if they had the bullet train to get to the park, yeah, I would assume that goes quick. Yeah, that yeah. would tell me that the motorcycle probably can't go that quick. And then it's, I don't know how they managed to do this, this ride in time, but whatever. I think, yeah. I mean, like the bullet train is going to go like 300 miles an hour. <laughs> uh, let's see how far it is from Tokyo to Kyoto. Uh, oh, no. It's a six hour drive. By train, it is uh, three hours, roughly three hours. By bicycle, <laughs> there's no route found. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, it is uh, a bullet train going like 300 miles an hour. It's about a three-hour trip. So they they would have to, uh, you know, drive like 300 miles an hour <laughs> or whatever to do that in in a mere three hours. So that, that's impressive. That bike they jumped on went very fast then. So fast, yeah, just flying out of control. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't, I don't know quite how that worked, but I'm happy that they were able to help. <laughs> <laughs> the best part of when he, when uh, Hodoro called them was they had all the, I mean, obviously it's just to show off the toys, but they had all the cards just like sitting, standing straight up somehow on the desk. Yeah, and they're they're like playing like almost like action figures with the cards, like oh, a steamliner, and he's like making it like dance back and forth, and it's animating like. Yeah, they they were totally just playing. <laughs> <laughs> they were definitely bored without the crew there. Yeah, and I think even I think I think even even Reggae was being like, ah, field trip. I uh, had had so much fun when I went. Like it was such a formative experience. They're just like waxing poetic about field trips. They, they yeah they were they jumped at the chance to get to come. <laughs> uh, the lovebirds meet at the bridge, Toby. It's a wonderful, cute little scene. They go to a they go to a little cafe. Uh, Kajiki. Uh, confesses that he saw a ufo as a kid and hijiri's parents got killed when she was young and uh she saw hitodama which like are like floating glowing balls i don't i don't really know what those are <laughs> must be it's, a cultural thing I, th- I think it's just like like little spirit orbs basically okay. <laughs> like i feel like wh- whatever pokemon game is not pokemon but it's like the watch game like yokai watch that one. Yeah. I feel like you catch spirits in those. You do. Yeah. More so than catching Pokemon. So I feel like it's the same vibe of like, that's just how they delineate ghost spirits. It's not like the white sheet ghost that we have. It's like the, the glowing magic orbs kind of thing. Gotcha. Gotcha. Her, her whole story was hilarious because like his is like, I saw a UFO like, okay, sure. Um, and hers is like, my parents were dead and then my brother was walking me through the graveyard for some reason and then i saw like two spirits hovering over my parents grave that's a way different story like that's that's way heavier <laughs> than his was. <laughs> i saw a cool spooky thing once i saw i saw the spirits of my dead parents <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then she gets a text and she runs off <laughs> <laughs> so date date ruined um, we'll, we'll catch back with her in a second, but we cut over to Minato next, and uh, I loved this scene. He confronts the Abyssal sister, and she's like, "Where's the Where's the common writer?" And he says, "Well, he as, uh, he's uh, he's on a field trip, and as his teacher, safety is my main concern." <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And then he fights her, and he uses his alchemy. There's a bunch of ninja mannequins around the theme park. And he animates the ninja mannequins to fight for him as if they are people. That's that so part was cool. fantastic. It was. Yeah. It was like the best way of it explains why they kept showing the ninja mannequins the whole time. Basically, it, it does. Yeah, <laughs> it, it definitely does. Uh, but it also makes him seem like super badass too. Like, like he he fully animated human function across multiple mannequins just using his alchemy techniques. His fancy ring. That's why yeah. he's the best teacher. That's true. That's true. That's why he's that's why he's the one. <laughs> uh, Kudo and Hodoro, we cut over to them first, and they're they're dressed up in their samurai gear in another great hilarious scene, like taking taking selfies, yep. <laughs> doing Instagram poses. <laughs> um, Kudo's like super into it, which is hilarious, and Hodoro is like, I don't know, this doesn't seem great. Um, but uh, then of course Hopper Run starts freaking out, and they they get joined into the fight as well. But yes, again, he has no cards. He can't transform. But the tree monster can transform. The prisoner shows up. Tree monster becomes the tree monster. 
and he's huge. He's like a giant kaiju. Like he's like a Godzilla sized <laughs> monster suddenly towering over the city. Um, since Hodoro can't transform with his normal cards, Kudo has some handy cards that she got from somewhere and she tosses them over. She has Ren King Robo and Yami Bat. And uh, Hodoro put, puts both of those in. And what does he become, Toby? The greatest Megazord of all time. <laughs> Hell yeah. We get a giant Kamen Rider Mecha, Bat King Robo. And it was when this happened, I cheered. <laughs> he just <laughs> I was he very goes, excited. Yeah. Because first of all, I noticed in the beginning, because they always show the cards like sitting on a table or something, right? And I noticed in the beginning, the cards they showed were these two. And I noticed that Ren King Robo was just a Gundam, just a full on Gundam. And I was very excited to see what they do with that. But uh, then when he actually becomes a giant robot, like, holy crap, so good. Uh, <laughs> and the but, the go best ahead. part of that, because like, so now they're both now, now they're a uh, Kaiju big battling. We'll call yep. it. <laughs> but it, they have like the the simplest yet most amazing shot of the camera is like mainly focused on two thirds of a t- like or three quarters of a temple on the screen. It's obviously some like well-known temple. You can see the city down below from it and down below in the, the city area, they have like, they have a little CG battle going on between uh Mecha Robo common rider night here and the giant tree monster. And they're doing like the full blown, like actual Godzilla battle, like in, yeah. the, like in the background and it just looks so good. It's so simple, but it looks so good. It was such a genius way to show off that battle because like there's so many ways they could have done that where it looked lame. Uh, but they, that gave it scale. And then that, that gave it like the importance of like, Oh no, they're actually like fighting through the city. And then it was far enough away that like they were able to like pull off the CG a little bit easier and stuff too. It was so smart to do the like <laughs> far away scenes. Um, it even looked okay when it was up close, but like, yeah, full on, you could tell the scale of their, their giant Kaiju battle. Um, I I really really love too that uh, they they had the couple scenes where Kudo's on a hill and she's like commanding Hodoro, so it's like it's it's full on like classic Toku classic like mech anime <laughs> that that scene you see over and over the all over the place because at one point she's like fly high it's no say and she like holds up her sword <laughs> and he goes I can fly oh right I have bat powers. <laughs> um uh, so so good like it was full on like like tommy um uh, uh calling on his his uh his the sword. Dragon sword with the with the dagger and playing yes. the flute and <laughs> i got that exact vibe from this um so again super super hilarious smart way to use the giant giant robot um and of course he runs out of energy <laughs> so his uh his friends show up just in time we, we get our um 300 mile an hour dirt bike shows up <laughs> and flies away, flies into knocking down the, the monster and gives him the steam liner card. So he can finally transform into uh, his, his normal form, I guess we'll say. And yeah, that's when we get our little cliffhanger. Like the, the battle continues, but uh, the episode ends. So again, a second, second two parter here. Did I block it up, block it out? Or did, did you skip, uh, the nerd friends ending of the date. Cause that's actually what, Oh, I did. On. I did. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so he, he follows her, which I thought was hilarious. He's like, well, I gotta know what's the, what, what this is all about. So he's like, all sneaking around following this girl he just met. And yeah, it turns out she, the text that she got is to meet up with the, the other prisoner who was in the, the prison transport, the calm um, mellow one. Not yeah, the, the, well, like I don't know if calm is the right word for him. He clearly is very into burning things. <laughs> um, he's got a hoodie. Serial killer, not, not serial killery looking one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, he gives her a hug. He's got the uh, he's got the uh, uh, I keep what, what do you say bracelet? But it's, uh, it's handcuff. a handcuff. Thank you for that. Um, he's got the handcuff. Like the, on the way still. they shot it was hilarious, just because like. I don't know that it didn't necessarily click right away. Like that's why the hoodie was always up. So you couldn't see his face, but like they do like the slow, like lingering shot on the hug. And then his hand slowly comes up and you see the handcuffs hanging off him still. Yeah. And you're like, Oh, she was dating the bad guy. (laughs) I think he's the brother though. Right. That seems pretty obvious. 
I guess so. I mean, like yeah. for the sake of why we need the drama here, he's going to sure, assume yes. it was the it's like the, the Hallmark movie vibe. We're Absolutely. officially at the the Hallmark movie vibe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're all supposed to assume that it's yes yeah, ex boyfriend and 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 Kajiki's being jilted here, but um, she she mentioned my brother in the story, so I think it has to be brother. But uh, yeah, I uh, my guess here's here's my prediction, Toby. I said this in the Discord. We'll see if it stands true. I think the brother becomes the the person who gets the abyssal sister driver. Okay. I'm calling that now. I think he gets the evil driver. I mean, I'm sure. I feel, feel I, like I, I, I've, no, I've no way to, uh, <laughs> I have no reason to disagree with that right now. So I, I got, I, yeah, just I'm putting that out there so I can come back later and say that I was smart or later I can come and never pretend like this ever happened. It'll be great. Yeah, just, just edit it out. It's fine. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, the 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 drama, I guess, there in the in the love interest. Um, I'm just happy again. There's no Spanner Kudo Hodoro triangle <laughs> happening in this episode. Yeah, with, with the, if the triangle's over, I can at least appreciate like him and her palling around isn't as bad to me. At least in like these, like it felt more natural today yep. with her being like i just why are you just assuming we're friends and like her giving him shit than like the more forced oh well i like you and you like him and what about this like i don't like that vibe as much <laughs> yeah th- this felt like the thing that you do to then make me believe that they fall for each other later right like this is the this is the build up to the stuff that you've already shown me of the like will they won't they thing like you need to make me realize that they like each other first <laughs> um <laughs> And this felt like that, yeah, I think for sure. So, Toby, what what are your thoughts on the uh, the start of the Kyoto saga here? It's much more interesting, I guess, than the than the stabby cactus saga. Because I feel like because we, we got some real there's some real levels to this. You know, the baby metals making an evil driver. You got the will they won't day of the nerdy best friend and his new horror house actress girlfriend seeing her brother slash some sort of jailbird slash ex boyfriend. Lots of pieces, lots of moving parts. <laughs> yeah, th- this episode felt like everything clicked into place and they realized what show they wanted to make. Like <laughs> it, because this is everything I want out of a high school aged anime. Like. It is. It was fun. It was light. It was airy. It was like super enthusiastic teenagers um, off doing hijinks, getting into shenanigans, like doing fun stuff. Like that's the type of stuff I want to see. If we're gonna have, you know, kids this young be be common writers, <laughs> um, and, and everyone got to be cool in it. Like everybody got to their their moment to shine. Like Kudo got to be fun and not just like super serious Kudo. Um, Hodoro got to be classic Hodoro following the rules when it's inconvenient <laughs> and uh, you know super excited for his buddy and all that stuff the the friend got to go go be a love interest and, and like that was very cool even like Minato got his his moment to shine that was really awesome the, even even Renge and, and, and Sabi Maru had a cool moment in this episode <laughs> uh, so yeah I think everybody they figured out all the characters how they all fit together and it was way less melodramatic than the last two episodes were, which like those were interesting, but like there, yeah, so much of the like, you know, family drama, high emotion stuff. And, and they'd really been, they'd really been hitting that card recently with, with a lot of the things of just like, like, Oh my God, don't wipe my memory. Like, no, please. No, <laughs> like that, that kind of a vibe. So it was cool to do like just a super, super fun one. Uh, this time around so yeah i i loved it It had a (laughs) i realized uh as i was typing up notes and stuff it had like a home alone vibe for me where like (laughs) there's actual danger right like the the bad guys here and she's like fighting them but like they're also having a lot of fun along the way (laughs) like (laughs) like there's like there's goofy stuff happening and it's fun but like there is actual real danger i just for some reason like was was definitely feeling the the home alone connection and i don't know why that popped in my head but it tickled your fancy as they say it did yeah i really liked it so i hope that uh hope we get more stuff like this i hope when they go back home uh they can they can keep that vacation energy alive (laughs) (laughs) 
But uh, yeah, so that's gonna do it for us for this uh, this week's episode. Uh, as always, we uh, we didn't read any emails this week, but we love getting emails from you guys out there in listener land. Send those over to cast at commonwritersucks dot com. And of course, if you want to, uh, you know, continue to join the comment writers community, you can sign up for our Patreon for just three bucks a month. You get access to our Discord, uh, where we are constantly talking about lots of fun stuff, and also. You get access to our exclusive content. Uh, lots and lots of cool stuff. We are doing Watch and Reacts, which are basically like uh, Mystery Science Theater for Common Writer episodes. Toby and I are watching uh, watching X-Aid right now, and you get to watch it along with us if you are a patron. And um, if you sign up now, you get all of the episodes we've, we've done so far, including uh, the entire watch through of Common Writer Black Sun, too. So... Definitely a, a, a great bargain for just three bucks a month. All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us. We'll be back next time for episode nine before we, or 10 rather. Uh, before, before we leave, Toby, where can the people find you on the internet? On Twitter, it's at Life of Tobes. And on YouTube, it's Tobes Plays, where for the whole month of October, Josh, I became a Five Nights at Freddy's lorologist. <laughs> you did. So, the, yeah. so the, there's a lot of stuff that, we can, that you can come learn. <laughs> anytime depending yeah, I, on when even on when you hear this you know you can learn about it in december for all i care yeah it's yeah. all there though listen once you get in the halloween vibe then just like let it roll for a little bit right <laughs> it, can, it can last there's uh, no reason I, to rush the holidays exactly i started watching i have not very deep into them yet but i started watching your five nights uh videos and um I, i've gotten a little taste of the lore so far but uh <laughs> <laughs> we, we've also talked about it. I watched the movie too, so I'm I, I'm coming at the lore from the the cinematic angle. Yeah, <laughs> uh, which which you're watching on Halloween, right? You're watching. Uh, we're, we're recording this prior to Halloween. We are recording this on October 30th. Are we going tomorrow to watch it in theaters like a fancy boy? I'm excited to hear about the theater experience specifically. <laughs> with five so minutes of so it's funny with so with that like I was gonna go over the weekend. And the theater was actually sold out. Like, there's actually oh, wow. no seats to sit in to go see the movie. So I was actually shocked because that seems unheard of anymore. I didn't think that was a thing. And then earlier today, we were talking in the Discord about how it's the most successful opening for a horror movie, like, ever. Or close to at this point, besides, Dang. like, It 1 and It 2. So apparently everyone came out in force for this. And yeah, that explains why I couldn't get a seat. And it's just crazy that's especially crazy considering it was streaming day and date on peacock like yeah. you could just you could just go watch this movie at home like i did uh which is which is crazy yeah i'm happy to hear that's successful i mean um yeah i, I, it's, I don't think it's a it's a spoiler my my general like thoughts on it were like it was like big dumb can't be fun like i really liked it it's not a perfect movie, but like it, it was an enjoyable, uh, it was an enjoyable time, uh, and I, I really, really love certain parts of it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll be excited to hear your thoughts. But yeah, I'm happy to hear people are, people are digging it. I the, the Toby, I think the I think the Zoomers have their, have their go to Halloween movie now. Maybe <laughs> it sounds hell like. yeah. <laughs> All right, very cool. Uh, for me, you can find me uh, pretty much everywhere at Pretty Dees Josh. Uh, as I mentioned, Tumblr is is where I post things on occasion. Just put up some uh, some gifts and some thoughts on uh, Gotcha at episode nine here. So go check those out if you're so inclined. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, we'll be back next time. Like I said, episode ten. We'll be checking that out in the second half of the Kyoto uh, saga, the Kyoto vacation here, and we hope you do join us back for that. But in the meantime, have a great week, everybody. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>